Alert, House Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal today gave IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick a new deadline of April 23 to turn over six years worth of President Donald Trump's tax returns. Neal said Reddick has an unambiguous legal obligation to hand them over. The letter Politico's story AP slash Pyongyang came open to another summit with Trump, with conditions, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he is open to a third summit with President Donald Trump, but set the year's end as a deadline for Washington to offer mutually acceptable terms for an agreement to salvage the high-stakes nuclear diplomacy, the North's state-run media said Saturday. But U.S. style dialogue of unilaterally pushing its demands doesn't fit us, and we have no interest in it. Kim said during the speech. We of course place importance on resolving problems through dialogue and negotiations. According to the Korean Central News Agency, or KCNA, Kim blamed the collapse of his summit with Trump in February on what he described as unilateral demands by the United States, which he said raised questions over whether Washington has genuine willingness to improve relations. But Kim said his personal relationship with Trump remains good and that they could exchange letters at any time. AP Next Up, Rochester, Minnesota Post Bulletin, President Trump to visit facility owned by Rochester Man, by Jeff Kiger in Burnsville, a Rochester business owner will be hosting a high-profile visitor from Washington, D. C. at his Burnsville facility on tax day. The company is owned by Bob Nuss. President Donald Trump is scheduled to visit Nuss Truck and Equipment in Burnsville on Monday. Nuss and his company, which has eight Minnesota locations, are based in Rochester. With a nod to the date that tax filings are due, the president is expected to tout the success of the American economy under his pro-growth policies, including the implementation of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. According to information released from the White House Post Bulletin Rosenstein on the Mueller report, Bloomberg's Jennifer Jacobs, at Jennifer Jacobs, Rod Rosenstein at private lunch, on Friday, at Metropolitan Club said don't forget what Mueller probe was about, cyber crimes. When it comes out, lot of what we see will deal with that, it'll clear up questions about Russian election interference. He said, people in room told me, the president, at 8.21 a.m., colon why should radical left Democrats in Congress have a right to retry and examine the $35, oh oh oh, oh oh oh, two years in the making, no collusion Mueller report, when the crime committed was by crooked Hillary, the DNC and dirty cops? Attorney General Barr will make the decision, because Congress is a co-equal branch of government, and can decide whatever it wants with or without the president's approval. Greatest thing ever, Tiger Woods is one stroke back at Augusta. Yes, D. C. It's cloudy now, but it's supposed to be decent today. Happy Saturday morning. Jake spoke with Bob Costa about the hill to die on on Washington Week Extra today. He tees off at 2.05 p.m. 10-minute conversation CNN Jake Tapper's scoop, Trump told CBP head he'd pardon him if he were sent to jail for violating immigration law. President Donald Trump told Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleenan he would grant McAleenan a pardon if he were sent to jail for having border agents block asylum seekers from entering the U.S. in defiance of U.S. Trump reportedly made the comment during a visit to the border at Calexico, California, a week ago. Law, senior administration officials tell CNN. It was not clear if the comment was a joke. Two officials briefed on the exchange say the president told Mkulinen, since named the acting secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, that he would pardon him if he ever went to jail for denying U.S. entry to migrants, as one of the officials paraphrased. CNN, Dead Hessen, Trump immigration shakeup lowers DHS morale. Morale at the Department of Homeland Security has long ranked lowest among federal agencies. President Donald Trump's purge of top Homeland Security officials is making it worse. Workers, from entry-level staffers to managers, have begun sending around their resumes, desperate to exit a leaderless workplace where they expect soon be ordered to implement legally questionable policies pushed by the White House. Some are even willing to take pay cuts. Politico White House Notebook for Nancy Cook, Treasury, 
Secretary Stephen Nutchin's Chief of Staff Eli Miller left the department late last week, praising the agency's unique and special team in his goodbye email to staff. For now, the Chief of Staff slot is going to remain vacant but two longtime Treasury staffers, John Baylor and Zach McEntee, will take over parts of Miller's portfolio and are being promoted to Deputy Chiefs of Staff. Treasury is also planning to move its well-liked General Counsel, Brent McIntosh, into David Malpas's former role as the Under Secretary of the Treasury for International Affairs. Both have worked with Nutchin since the campaign. Malpas is now the president of the World Bank, and Monica Crowley remains a top contender for the agency's key communications slot, spotted at the building late last week. Jared World as Jared Kushner develops an immigration plan, he is leaning on an experienced policy team to help him. Soon to be joining the team, attorney George Fishman, according source close to DHS and a White House official. Fishman currently serves as the deputy general counsel at DHS and previously worked on the Hill for the House Judiciary Committee as well as its subcommittees on immigration policy and enforcement and border security. CNN's Caitlin Collins, former White House aide who mocked McCain as dying anyway joining pro-Trump PAC, Kelly Sadler, the former White House aide who was let go after she mocked the late senator. John McCain, is joining the pro-Trump super PAC America first action to handle communications, CNN has learned. She is expected to start Monday. Erin Montgomery, the PAC's current communications director, is stepping down. CNN, a number of title changes and promotions. From the White House, he is now assistant to the president and senior advisor for digital strategy. The list, FYI, Dan Scavino's title has changed. He was previously assistant to the president and director of social media. Recess reading for senators, CNN's Andrew Kaczynski and Paul LeBlanc. Trump's Fed pick Stephen Moore is a self-described radical who said he's not a big believer in democracy. In speeches and radio interviews reviewed by CNN, and file, Moore advocated for eliminating the corporate and federal income taxes entirely, calling the 16th Amendment that created the income tax the most evil law passed in the 20th century. Moore's economic worldview envisions a slim-down government and a rolled-back social safety net. He has called for eliminating the Departments of Labor, Energy and Commerce, along with the IRS and the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. He has questioned the need for both the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Department of Education. He has said there's no need for a federal minimum wage, called for privatizing the Ponzi scheme of Social Security and said those on government assistance lost their dignity and meaning. CNN 2020 Watch, Cory Booker, a would-be bachelor president, says Americans are open to lots of different types of families in the White House, by WAPO's Kevin Sullivan in Newark, my romantic life is evolving, and I'm looking forward to one day having another title, husband and father. And if the American people will it, I'm going to be President of the United States as well. For weeks, Booker has been hinting that he has a boo, a girlfriend, but on this March day he still hasn't yet said her name publicly. I believe both of those are going to happen. But now, pressed a little bit, he acknowledges what Booker watchers have long suspected, he's dating actress Rosario Dawson, who turns 40 in May, a New Yorker who lives in Los Angeles. He says they met at a fundraiser for mutual friend Ben Jealous during Jealous's unsuccessful 2018 run for governor of Maryland. They didn't speak much then, but they met up again at a party hosted by another mutual friend and they started dating just before Thanksgiving. WAPO, MSNBC's Joy Reid will interview Booker at his home in Newark at 10 a.m. The investigations, Ben Schreckinger, Roger Stone wants to put Assange on the stand, Stone hopes to put WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange on the stand at his upcoming trial for alleged obstruction and witness intimidation. The prospect of obtaining Assange's testimony has grown somewhat likelier with his Thursday arrest in London, which paves the way for his possible extradition to the United States. According to a person familiar with the thinking of Stone's legal team, F or the longtime Trump confidant, a connoisseur of political theater, 
putting the iconic, white-haired hacker on the stand would have the added benefit of producing a pure media spectacle. Politico, Kyle Cheney, Stone cites Barr, Kavanaugh writings in last ditch effort to dismiss Mueller indictment, as Ecuador harbored Assange, it was subjected to threats and leaks, by Nitz Nicholas Casey and Joe Becker, the secrets came directly from the phones of President Lenin Moreno of Ecuador, intimate pictures of him and his family on vacation, text messages from his wife, even a photograph of the president himself in a posh bedroom, eating a lobster in bed. The material, published last month on an anonymous website, was particularly embarrassing because Mr. Moreno was in a bruising national fight over his austerity measures. But rather than mount a defense, the president played the victim. He blamed WikiLeaks, whose founder, Julian Assange, had spent the last seven years holed up in the country's London embassy. WikiLeaks' actions were despicable, said the country's vice president on television, vowing to take action. The group denied leaking the information, but on Thursday Ecuador made good on its threat, opening the door to British police officers who carted away Mr. Assange. Knit sexual harassment files, company led by Trump nominee was rife with harassment, including groping and kissing, report says, by WAPO's Michael Bryce Sadler. A federal workplace investigation found rampant sexual harassment and retaliation at AccuWeather, AccuWeather's chief executive at the time of the allegations and investigation, Barry Myers, was tapped by President Trump to lead the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. A federal contractor, including groping, touching and kissing of subordinates without consent. The detailed results of the investigation, not previously reported, were compiled last year by the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs and obtained by the Washington Post. It determined that Hacu Weather, under Myers, fostered the culture ripe for sexual harassment, turned a blind eye to allegations of egregious conduct and retaliated against those who complained. According to the report, the investigation was prompted by a complaint filed September 6, 2016, alleging a hostile work environment and termination based on sexual orientation and sex. Many other complaints from Macu Weather employees followed. Wapo Valley Talk, at Cecilia Gang, New, Facebook board losing two very respected directors, Reed Hastings of Netflix and Erskine Bowles of Obama. Clinton administrations. We know they were not happy at all with last few years of decisions. Media Watch I didn't really deck him. New York Post gossip King Richard Johnson drops a dime on himself. He's retiring. By Vanity Fair's Joe Pompeo, the chronicler of canoodlings, bloviations, and pepperpots, enemy of Alec Baldwin and the Daily Snooze, occasional pugilist, and fast friend of anyone who wanted to get famous in Manhattan spent four decades in the gossip business. VF, Ben Tracy is joining CBS News White House team. He joins Wei Jia Jiang, who is back next week from maternity leave, and Paula Reed who has been formally named a White House correspondent for CBS. He previously was based in Beijing for the network. Clicker, the nation's cartoonists on the week in politics, edited by Matt Worker, 13 Keepers Great Weekend Reads, curated by Daniel Lipman, The Deadbeat Billionaire, the inside story of how West Virginia Gov. Jim Justice stocks taxes and slow pays his bills, by Forbes' Christopher Hellman. Since 2016 courts have ordered Justice and his companies to pay more than $10 million to more than a dozen suppliers, workers and government entities. Over the same time, his companies also piled up $13 million plus in tax liens. He claims to have paid off many of these. Forbes, what I've learned from collecting stories of people whose loved ones were transformed by Fox News, by Luke O'Neill in NY Mag. If I had to pinpoint the most common reaction to all the thousands of replies to the story, I'd say it was one of exasperation, and desperation. I didn't realize so many other people were dealing with this, many said. Does anyone know an online support group for people going through this to share tips on deprogramming and or surviving these relationships?
one asked and why mag the lost civilization of california wine by esther mobley in the san francisco chronicle a california cult unwittingly created one of the country's great wineries and then lost it the haunting story of a vineyard's rise collapse and refusal to die sf chronicle the heavy metal grifter by christian McFate in rolling stone gay breed was a failed rock star who reinvented himself as a concert promoter now he's in prison for defrauding fans and rocks a leap out of one dollar seven million rolling stone the american worth ethic by bryce covert in long reds like so many of our lofty ideals the american work ethic is actually two different standards one for the wealthy and one for the poor with two different interpretations of what work looks like long reds the banana is done Dying. The race is on to reinvent it before it's too late, by Wired UK's Matt Reynolds. The world's most popular fruit is facing extinction, and scientists are racing to use gene editing to save it. To succeed, they'll need to overcome an even bigger problem, opposition to GMO crops. Wired, how big business is hedging against the apocalypse, by Jesse Barron in The Knit magazine. Investors are finally paying attention to climate change, though not in the way you might hope. Mitt, climate change could destroy his home in Peru. So he sued an energy company in Germany. By Brooke Jarvis in the Knit magazine, local communities are taking the world's largest polluters to court. And they're using the legal strategy that got tobacco companies to pay up. Knit, Sandy Fox, the reporter and the serial killer, by Sarah Weinman in Crime Reads. For the browser com's description gripping tale of british journalist sandy fox who went to atlanta hoping to interview spiro agnew met a classically handsome man in her hotel bar had a week-long affair with him and found out 11 days later that he had killed 18 people in the preceding three months she wrote up her story for the atlanta constitution then turned it into a book killing time in which she tried to be hard-bitten but ended up sounding naive, she said her lover was as much a victim as any of the 18 people he killed. Crime reads, I was built for the battle. Chris Cuomo is fighting for his life on CNN, by The Hollywood Reporter's Jeremy Barr. The anchor has parlayed a combative style and a both-sides approach into the top-rated broadcast on the third-place network. He is still not satisfied. THR, Could a Woman Walk Around the World Today? by Camille Bromley and Nat Gill, per the browser com's description. Five years ago National Geographic commissioned Paul Salopic to walk around the world and report on his travels. Did it have to be a man? Could a woman walk around the world with the same facility? Physically, yes. He is now halfway through that track. Culturally, there would be more variables. Nat Gill, Stephen Curry has a popcorn problem, by Nitz Mark Stein, as the N, B, A, Playoffs begin. The Golden State Warriors superstar guard tells all about his favorite snack and how it fuels his sharpshooting. Knit, the death of an adjunct, by the Atlantic's Adam Harris, Thea Hunter was a promising, brilliant scholar. And then she got trapped in academia's permanent underclass. The Atlantic, HT Longform Org. Yeah.